Oh, no, thank you. Well, how much do you know about me and my involvement with the city and oh, the Oh, I see flows? you. Um, and I've talked to you, I think, on one of your occasions or so, but I've, I've seen you um, and read about you know, testifying before city council. And I know you've contacted our office before about various issues. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. There's probably lots I don't know, but I know. I certainly know you've got a reputation. Well, what, mean, what could be done for what's happening with Arlington? And how do we err on the side of precautionary? What, what what can we do to slow some of this down? And what can I do? Yeah, I mean. Oh well, I mean, this, as far as the city council and what they do, I can't do anything other than you know people elect them. So I mean, I, I, I they're duly elected just like I'm duly elected. I don't have any authority over them. What are your concerns about gas drilling, just as? A resident living here amongst well, the gas Well, I know that in the time that they've been doing that, which of course it's slowed down somewhat the activity, you know, and since um, kind of moved on statewide, just Eagle Ford drilling and mm -hmm. some of the other areas are not as complicated as the situation was in Arlington with the urban drilling issues, uh, proximity to schools, houses, and things of that nature aren't so much a comp. A, um, a concern when you look at other parts of the state where drilling is taking place out in Midland, um, other places that there's considerably more drilling than was taking place in Arlington. Of course, Arlington slowed down. Um, so I don't, I don't, I mean, that's just, but as far as any, what, what we would do in terms of statewide, of course, the Railroad Commission, it has the authority over that type of activity. And so when people say that they don't get a lot of results from the Robo Commission and that they're a pawn well, for Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They're elected just like everybody else. And Christy Craddock is new. Uh, there are three members. Uh, Christy Craddock, Barry Smitherman, Smitherman and, I mean, and uh, I'm drawing a blank on the third one, right, the second. Anyway. Point, point, Porter. Uh -huh. Porter is the last name. You're talking about the uh, three Robo Commissioners? It starts with a P. Well, there Porter, is, I think there might be Porter. Porter, yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. it. Cause, um, but um, Christy was just elected to her first term, and those are six-year terms. And then Barry Smitherman has already announced that he's running for Attorney General. And this, is, this happened actually two years ago. There was a situation where, of the three, Michael Williams was uh, running for Senate. And well, just because it's slowed down here in Arlington, does that make you think that we're safer? Because if the price of natural gas goes back up, they're going to be blowing and a going again. We've got 50, 60 pad sites right. within three to 600 yeah. feet of neighborhoods and schools. Well, and I know that um, the it's, drilling is going it's crazy everywhere else. It's not, I mean, so it's not, I mean, they're just not drilling as much here because there's, I mean, there's so much activity. In, like I said, the Millen area and in the Eagle Horde shale, and, and perhaps some others. But the issues they have there are not necessarily the same issues that you have in you know, rural versus urban drilling. But the city council did take some steps to increase the uh, distance. No, they still allow variances. And uh, I mean, how often do they do that? 85% of the time. I, they, they, I'm not they do it. Okay. Yeah, there's 60 pad sites. I only know maybe two that didn't actually get voted in, and it just depends on how affluent the neighborhood is and how many people band so together. So two of the 60, yeah. the only ones that meet? The yeah, they, the one on Center Street, they yeah. didn't didn't have that one because that was the gateway to Arlington, and then there was the one by, the, um, on, by Baird Road, uh, by the, uh, we call the floodplain. But the whole idea that it's slowed down, you know, it's not as bad as in rural areas, that's... No, that's, I'm just, I was just giving you the statewide picture. Yeah. I'm just saying... Well, the, that, the yeah. rules that they use to drill by are rural rules. They really haven't updated for urban drilling. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm aware of is that they want electric uh, compressor stations. They want now? Uh, they want electric oh. as opposed to diesel compressor stations. That, and that's the 
urban versus the only difference. In That's this. the only difference that I'm aware of. They don't allow flaring in the city limits either, but the Railroad Commission can give them special permission to flare, and we do want them to flare. So do we have flaring loose? I've seen flaring at the GM plant four years ago, four to 45 years ago, and someone said they saw that. Four to five? Four to five years ago. And then oh. someone said they saw flaring over at the Rolling Hills Country Club one day. But they flare because it's safer to flare rather than have some explosion. But when they don't flare, it's even worse because these are invisible emissions that only an infrared camera can pick mm -hmm. up. And I don't know if you've ever seen have you seen a video of the infrared emissions coming off the Lake Arlington? So. If you go to the YouTube, I put a video out mm -hmm. from the state, and all you have to type in is Lake Arlington storage tank emissions. If you type in those four words, Lake, Ar Lake Arlington storage tank emissions, you will see. Um, that You're talking about the drilling that's out there by Lake Arlington? Yeah, there's, yeah. In fact, this is what. This big pack of papers came in the mail today. Uh -huh. This came from TCEQ, and I've asked for all the permits, everything yes. related to any kind of compressor engines, anything related to any kind of uh, e equipment that will account for the formaldehyde that we saw in really high amounts back in 2009, yeah. before the electric compressor stations came in, because uh -huh. they've changed things since. But we're still trying to figure out at Lake Arlington how many compressors we've got that are still gas-fired and diesel-powered. But we have problems with electric compressors because in 2011, over there at 360 and Sublet, there was an emission event because a storm took out the electricity and what happened to the electric compressor stations is the electricity went off and they had to go into shutdown mode. Pressure built up into two different drill sites, one in Delwardens and Garden and one over there at Sublet and 360. The wellhead um, safety valves popped open like they were supposed to work and they released gas into the atmosphere with other surrogate gases. Even though the safety features worked with the Sublet and 360 site, it failed uh, two of three safety features. I mean, we were on the third one before an explosion. But if to allow gas to vent to avoid an explosion is a success, when one of my friends got gassed in her own home because she when electricity what? gassed. When electricity went out, she opened up her windows. And that's when the winds were whipping around and she had gas all in her home. And, and she called, this? this was at Sublet in 360. And two days later, she went before city council and Robert Rivera said, even though this accident happened, don't look to see that these, you know, they were voting on six more gas wells. They, they approved those six more gas wells within, you know, 20... When you say they approved them, are they approving a variance? Or they approving no, they approved more at the drill site that had the emission event right. before TCEQ even had a chance to investigate and have any kind of conclusion. They were just like, well, even though this hiccup happened, everything worked as planned and no, no explosion. But we still have people that said they had gas in their home, shivering teeth, a 200-pound dog stumbling around the next day, kids and husbands with nosebleeds in that area. You know, she, Jane Lynn has her, uh, we, we've, we've got people blogging now because in their own neighborhoods, we've got three Arlington bloggers about gas well issues. I just want to know what more can we do because participating in City Hall has become a, a no-win for me. I just have no success. You ran for City Council. I did. And what they've done now is they've, on their new gas drilling ordinance, allow uh, this new zoning that says, here's a special permit to drill here. This pad site can hold 10 to 20 gas wells. Now this new drilling zone, once we approve it and approve the first well on this drilling zone, wells 2 through 20 don't ever have to go before council. We will never have any more citizen input. It's all administratively so approved. New. Yeah. Now, now they approve the site. They approve the site and with up to X well. Right. And as long as they're in inspection within you know, they're meeting their inspection guidelines, which to me for the city is just mostly aesthetic things that they go look for, that they're gonna administratively approve these wells and people living in the area whether or not so they So they do have to go back and get them administratively approved? Each new, each new well has to be signed off by somebody sitting at a desk, wells 2 through 20 or 2 right. through 10. But the city council approves the original. They approve the drilling zone and the first well. And once they approve the new drilling zone and the first well, all the rest of the wells that can fit on that site, 
no more public comment. So, I mean, I don't even bother going to the city council meetings anymore because it just doesn't do any good. Because, they, you know, even at the very end of the meeting, they don't allow citizen input to be televised anymore. So, you don't even, even if an item is not, a, if an item is not an agenda item, right. and you're not sitting in the audience, nobody's reporting on what other issues people are having. So that if they are having problems with gas wells that they've already approved a drilling zone, no one else knows about it. So they, council has shut us down in public speaking wise. And it's just a matter of time before the natural price of natural gas comes back up. I think we're like a little more than 60% drilled out in Arlington. We still have another good 40 to 50% to go. So what we want protection wise is a voice when we can't even get Chesapeake to return our calls to ask them why they're not flowing back in these closed, flowing back, rolling back, flow. Yeah, you can drill, frack, and flow back, and then the well's in production. When, when, when you drill, there's some issues that they can fix. When they frack, there's some issues they can fix to make urban drilling safer. When they flow back, they have some companies that take the extra expense to flow back in these closed, pressurized containers. And just three days ago, I sent city council a picture of flowback happening at the Rose site at 287 on an I-20. Someone went and took a picture and these tanks are wafting in these white hydrocarbons and it's blowing across this tree line with a known neighborhood on the back side of that. And I'm like, you know, our ordinance doesn't say they have to use the best emission control technologies. They just have to use industry accepted standards, which is rule. And it goes back to the first point of they're still drilling under rural methods with the exception of electric compressor stations. So you said Chesapeake won't call you back? Nope. And the guy from Brightland Oil and Gas said he'd try to talk to somebody from Chesapeake and he hasn't followed up with me. So who did you contact at Chesapeake? Oh, this Johnson guy, Jim Parajan, who works with the City of Arlington, right. gave me this Johnson guy's name and number, and he's never returned my call. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I think. And his job is? Just to field the calls from the citizens, but, I mean, okay. I'm not the first person, you know, that Chesapeake hasn't called back. I mean, I'm sure with pipeline issues, you know, in the midstream, you've got people that are, you know, upset that something's going across their land that, you uh -huh. know, could be with, they're within the 700-foot explosion zone. I just want to know what is within your power. How can how can we have more well, of a voice? Again, I, I don't have any jurisdiction over the city council. I mean, they are duly elected, as I said, the same way I am. And the only way that things like that work is like when people come and talk to me. There's somebody coming in tomorrow that's concerned about something at the schools. The school board members are duly elected, and we have certain you know regulations that are passed at the statewide level. But for the most part, the philosophy in Texas, just like in the schools, has been local control. That's that's a general philosophy. Are you able to introduce bills? Pardon? Are you able to introduce bills? Yes. See, I'm, I'm learning about all this political stuff as I go along. Yeah, I, each of us are. Well, I mean, I can send you a list of different things they could do at different phases of drilling that can make things safer for us. If you were to write a bill that airs on the side of protected to public, you know, the public on the fence line, I mean, would well, you be it willing? Would have, it would have to gain the support of a majority, obviously, of the 150. And I can tell you that, again, local control is sort of the driving philosophy for everything, not just drilling. Schools, over a thousand independent school districts. Very different from any other state. So, um, you know, the, the initiative that would have to occur is that there would be at least 76 members who are 75 others besides me, whatever bill that I have, in order to pass it. Even if it died in the House, I mean, that's fine. I just want to know someone besides Lon Merman and Wendy Davis 
are working to try to make things safer if you're living next to a drill site. And my husband has cancer. My teen has an adrenal, biomarkers for an adrenal tumor. Um, mm -hmm. My detox doctor told me I've got thyroid and adrenal issues that we're treating me for. And we live within a half a mile of a drill site. And we've been downwind to the UTA 22 gas wells, we're close to GM and their two pad sites of their 22 gas wells. We've just been in a day. What part of Roger you live I'm at the Cowboys Stadium. You're by Cowboys Stadium? Mm -hmm. I'm right catty corner from First Methodist Church. First Methodist? Mm hmm. Okay. At Division okay. and Mesquite. Okay. So you're saying all this has occurred since the drilling started or had any of the items? Well, in January, they were finishing the gas wells by the Cowboy Stadium because uh -huh. Chesapeake put four gas wells there. They, uh -huh. they had uh, drilled three during the summer of 2012, and then they supposedly flowed back those three last fall. And then in December, they drilled the fourth well. And in January of 2013, they were pulling the equipment up, and we had an odor event, and I went out there and interviewed employees in the area that said they were sickened and smelled it and people two miles away that said they smelled it through open records requests and nothing made the you know nothing made the media i mean nobody covered the story that there were five fire trucks one ambulance dispatched i mean this is right you know next to the cowboy stadium but what happened also in January, I mean, that, those odors came into my home. My mother-in-law was standing right there when we were like smelling something that smelled like cat urine. And I'm like, so the next day I went to Walmart and there was that cat urine odor again. And so that's when I called 911. They said the fire department's already out there. I called TCQ. We're already out there. There's an, there's an odor event. We are aware of it. Well, prior to that, when they were getting that site ready, um, my husband's lymph nodes were swelling, and my team was having this rash that kept reoccurring. So all this kind of happened in January. But like I said, we've been living here 18 years, 20, 21 years, but the gas well at UTA has been there six, the one at GM has been there five. So we've been in this air shed, and especially all the drilling that's been happening in South Arlington when the predominant winds blow from the southwest to the northeast. We've been downwind to all that for all these years. So. I'm thinking my family's the canary in the cage. I don't know, but so your family's health issues were diagnosed in January of this year. Yes, the very first time anything. Yes, well, I mean, I was me and my son have had issues in the past that he's been seeing uh, Dr. Chiarella for when we had a snow in day of 2010, I think, mm -hmm. and he was outside playing. He's normally a gamer, and he came inside, and the next day his eyes were dilated. He was lethargic. He had all the BP symptoms. He was the nauseated. He had the vertigo. They uh, didn't know what was going on with him. He was lethargic uh, for 10 days. He missed seven days of school, and I think there was a cooling inversion that made him sick, and I think that came either from the GM site or the UTA site. I mean, he was exactly north of that, that UTA site. And my husband said, well, that was wintertime. The winds had to be coming from the north. But if it was a still day, the winds would be nothing. Things would be building up. And if there was a cooling inversion, it pushes the pollution down to the ground. There was a lady that lives within 600 feet of the UTA drill site. Her doctor sent a note to the TCEQ a few years ago saying that her symptoms have to be related to the nearby drilling. She's had uh, blood and urine tests that tested positive for BTEX in her system. Her mm -hmm. name was Sandra Dembrabender. And um, she thinks that there was a cooling inversion too, you know, she, when we were talking about what happened to my son. But she's had a, a methane detector in her home go off. She doesn't even have gas hooked up to her home. When the pad site's busy, her methane detector's going off. What's happening is when they're finishing these wells and they're not flaring, all these invisible hydrocarbons are building up. And what it is, it's really making global warming speed up because so of the methane you have losses. A methane detector in your house? I have a new. I just bought a new methane detector. I've been putting it on my porch with the window open since the site's been active. But we haven't had winds come from the east to the west, so it has not gone off since they were doing that fourth well. They just fracked the fourth well, and they're saying that they may not flow back this fourth well. 
And that was another issue I had with city council is when they were flowing back wells one, two, and three last fall, I kept asking them for tell me when they're going to flow back these wells so I can look at the winds and evacuate my family if I have to. And they never would provide that information. And my contact at Chesapeake wouldn't provide that information. They're not giving enough information. So Mr. Johnson is the one? Well, he just never returned my call. But Jim Parajan from the city of Arlington wouldn't tell me when they were flowing back. And on this fourth well that they just fracked about two weeks ago, I was told from the city that they may or may not flow back that well. I drove by yesterday, I saw flow back tanks, the old school, the old school kind, the one with the open hatch. And they said that they will flow back depending on the pressure. So I'm thinking to myself, why are they not flowing back this well? I know so much about so, oil and gas. So uh, the one the city won't give you the information on, this is the one by the Cowboy Stadium? Yeah, there's four wells by the Cowboy right. Stadium. And I just would like to know what days that they're going to frack, what days they're flowing back, so I can watch the winds and move my family out of the way. But on this fourth well, I ran across something very unique that we're all... Some of the activists are scratching their head. We've never heard of not flowing back a well. And I don't know if it's because the Cowboy Stadium is such a heavy building that they're afraid of seismic events or sinkholes and displacement that now that they pumped all this water and chemical in the ground that they really are afraid to flow it back. Or maybe they don't want to flow it back because they know it's going to waft in these open so hatch tanks. You would like to know when the city or when the well has been drilled by the city? Well, when the, I'd like to know if the, when the city gets the information from the drillers, when they get a timetable of when they're going to frack, when they're going to flow back, I would like to have that information because on the city's website, all they say status-wise is drilling, fracking, flow back production. You don't get any more details other than those so four words. they have on their website? They do have a breakdown of each, each company, like Chesapeake, Carrizo, XTO. They do have a breakdown of where the drill sites are in each neighborhood, and then you can break down further to see what stage it's in. But they only give you an overview of whether they're drilling, fracking, flow back, or in production. But I thought that's what you were wanting to know. Well, if they tell you what phase it's in, it doesn't tell you what date that phase is occurring. Oh, so the date of the phase. Yes. It tells you that it's in a certain phase of the various ones you've just Yeah, described. it just said, but it doesn't give you a time frame. Okay. So you have specifically asked Jim Parajon to tell you the dates. The, the flow back. And he has said we don't know yet? Or There's a video of him being hostile to me on YouTube telling me that I needed to sit down, I needed to calm down. Was this a city council meeting? No, this was up in the planning and zoning third floor and I wanted to know why I couldn't have the correct flow back date because one of his employees gave me a date that turned out it was not true. And I'm, I'm having this conversation with Jim saying, you know, it could be flowing back today or tonight or tomorrow. I need to know if my family can sleep in our own house tonight. Uh -huh. You can sleep in your own house. I'm like, no, you're not listening to me. I want to know when they're flowing back so I can watch the winds and move my family out of the way. Because uh -huh. I've seen the infrared videos. Uh -huh. I've seen the methane and surrogate gases build up. So especially how is there a video of this? I was holding it and talking to him. Oh. And so he was saying to you in the video to sit down? Mm-hmm. So you were... St I was standing up with my arm on the counter while we're talking. I'm like, can't you give me the date? I need the flowback dates. Do you even know the flowback dates? And, you know, he was just like, you have to sit down, you have to sit down. So I went and I sat down and I said, okay, I'm sitting down. I need the information. And then he just starts to walk away. And I'm like, what's going on? You're not giving me this information. So and then he down. just walked away, and then he came back with Don Johnson's or whatever that guy's name from Chesapeake's phone number. He goes, there you go. And I knew that was a dead end because no one from Chesapeake ever calls back. And it was a dead end. So I did not get any, any relief so from the city. he left to go get the name. Mm -hmm. He didn't even tell me he was going to go get it. I just thought he was walking away, end of conversation. Uh -huh. So that was just, you know, very stressful. <sighs> And so he came back and gave you the Johnson name. Phone number, yeah. Phone number. Mm -hmm. And said, so do you have that? Um, 
I don't know if I still have it anymore, but you know, it just he never called back. I left one. And so two. how many times did you attempt? About call? two calls, two times. And approximately when was that? Like a month ago? Well, this was probably. Oh, I don't know. This was back. This is probably in November or, or early December. Of last year. Mm -hmm. So November, December, or twelfth. Mm -hmm. So this is before. They drilled the fourth well. well, yeah. And so now just recently, I saw, I could hear the fracking, and I called the city or emailed them. I said, hello, I know they're fracking because I can hear it, I can feel it. Why didn't I get a calendar? Because they were sending me a calendar when they got, got calendars. But they only sent me one calendar, and the other times I've had to say, hey, where's my flowback information? So they really don't, they don't have a system to notify the, the public of when imminent danger is happening. And I call it imminent danger because people need to be, they, they post a sign, they're supposed to post a sign of when they're supposed to frack. That's they one of the- They post a sign in the neighborhood? Yeah, they, around and, and such a, that's um, one of the, of they, right at the drill site. They're supposed to post a sign that says when they're fracking. But you know, to the general public, just because fracking is allowed in urban areas, they assume that it's safe. Why bother looking and reading the sign? And the way the signs are positioned, I think I've seen those signs on Collins, but they're not on Truman, where their neighborhood is. So if they're going to put information about fracking, number one, they need to alert the public of what fracking is and why they might want to know when they're fracking. But they sure don't post signs when they're flowing back because those are invisible emissions. And there's so many people that are uneducated to this whole process that just think because it's allowed in urban areas that it's safe. And the reality of it is, the more you learn about fracking, it is not something that you want to be a fence line to, and we don't even know what the fallout is. I encourage you to go to my website. Uh, it's barnettshellhell.wordpress.com. Barnett. B-A-R-N-E-T-T -T shale, S-H-A-L-E, hell, H-E-L-L -L, dot wordpress dot com. Just a minute, hold on. I, I'm running out of room mm -hmm. for a second. Okay, Barnett Shell Hell at? A dot wordpress dot com. Okay. Dot wordpress I dot com. Right. Okay, <laughs> because what I have is interviews from Arlington citizens and other videos that detail some of the risk, and some of the health effects that people are already starting to see. I've got a lady that I videotaped her saying every time her granddaughter comes over, she gets nosebleeds. And this woman actually went before city council and said, I live in Arlington, and when my granddaughter comes to sleep over at my house, she gets nosebleeds. Who is this? Tammy Carson. And, so and she's she at 287 and I-20, right where they were just oh. flowing back. A couple days ago, I sent them a picture. In fact, she was the one that took that picture of this white hydrocarbons wafting out of these flowback tanks that aren't closed. They're vent. They have to vent because they'll explode. This water is flammable. That's what happens when the flowback. When the water flows back, it's flammable. It's got hydrocarbons. It's got benzene, tylene, ethylbenzene, xylene. Those BTEX constituents are in any kind of fossil fuel, gas, uh, natural gas. You've got BTEX. So, okay. So now, what, what can I do to help you? What do you have in mind? I just want you to start writing some legislation. I'll be well, glad not, to email you. We don't meet again you. until January 2015. Yeah, I know. I just, That's why right. haven't you been at the forefront of this? Maybe it's my because next Because we question. each have areas that we bring to the table. Each legislator has experience, background in various things. So my entire life's work, since I started teaching when I was 20, is education and public ed and higher ed. So the, you tend to write legislation related to the committees on which you sit. And so I'm on, the right now, the higher ed committee and the appropriations committee. I asked to be on appropriations when we had a $27 billion deficit last time. So my interest and my passion, my expertise is education. Are you a Democrat or Republican? I'm That's, a Republican. See, and I, you know, I try not to look. I used to right. be a Republican, right. and only because my mom and dad thought I thought they said they were once. I try not to draw party lines, right. yeah. and but I, now I, I, I go vote Democratic. With, um, Chris Turner and everybody that represents Arlington, 
I'm the only Arlington representative that only represents Arlington, but Chris Turner has a piece of Southeast and Grand Prairie. There are four others that have little pieces of the perimeter, but um, so that, you know, the legislation that I typically work on are things related to school public education, both at the K-12 and higher ed levels. Now, we obviously have a myriad of subject matter that we deal with. There's about, usually about 6,000 bills filed each session. That's a lot. About 6,000. Of the 6,000, about 1,500 make it through the process. And so some people file bills knowing they're not going to be successful just to say they file them. I'm more of a pragmatist. If I'm going to file a bill, I'm going to see it through. That's my the way I operate. Well, how do you feel about these drill sites being so close to the schools? Well, again, it's my understanding. I, I do have concerns about well sites being close to schools. And at one point, I think the it was 300 feet, and then they moved.